not the first time something like this has happened. On Sunday, two activists threw soup on the Mona Lisa. Security guards at Paris's Louvre Museum caught them and led them away, and the priceless painting itself wasn't harmed. It's behind protective glass because of the threat of incidents like this. But why would someone take this kind of action at Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, and why throw soup? This was one of a series of protests targeting art in recent years. In this particular event, the activists were trying to raise awareness about food. They asked, quote, what is more important, art or the right to a healthy and durable diet? And the group that organized the protest says it highlights the need to protect the environment and the food sources we have. But not everyone agrees with the message or the tactics. One tourist said it was disgusting to treat historically valuable art that way. Another critic said she understood the protesters' demands, but didn't see why they'd target art or what the connection was between food and the Mona Lisa. Other demonstrators threw cream on the same painting two years ago, and the Reuters news agency says Van Gogh's sunflowers painting in London and some of Goya's paintings in Madrid have also been targeted. The protests are deeply divisive, with supporters hoping the attention they get affects the changes they want, while critics say they only stir anger and wind up hurting the protesters' cause. We'd love to get your opinions on that first story. Teachers, please share some under today's show at youtube.com slash at the world A to Z. This is the world A to Z. My name is Carl Azuz. Next stop is Ecuador. What used to have a reputation as being a peaceful South American country has spiraled into gang violence. Ecuador isn't a major producer of illegal drugs, according to the CIA, but it is a place where chemicals are used to make them and where a lot of drugs are flowing through. There have been shootings, murders, civilians killed in the crossfire. Ecuador's new president declared war on gangs earlier this year. They responded by temporarily taking over a television station and allegedly assassinating the prosecutor who is leading the investigation into that. The government has made thousands of arrests in recent days. Here's what its efforts look like. We're the fourth in a convoy of what looks to be about four pickup trucks, all of them unmarked, no lights, no sirens, all the officers in plain clothes. We're with Ecuador's National Police Force as they're dispatched to a house with suspected ties to terror groups. They won't tell us where exactly we're headed, and they ask us to blur their faces. It shows you the level of concern and fear So we'll keep it vague. We're just outside Guayaquil, Ecuador's largest city, and headed into one of the most violent areas, Duran. More than a dozen officers storm what could be mistaken for an abandoned barn, but their intel suggests otherwise. They cuff two men and search the high grass and weeds. On each corner, security cameras strategically positioned. Officers hack them down. As they leave here, we notice even he's carrying some evidence. It's like a gun and several rounds in that baggie. This is just one of thousands of raids across Ecuador carried out over the past two weeks. Ecuador's military now deployed to neighborhoods. Ecuador's latest surge in violence sparked by the suspected prison escape of notorious gang leader Jose Adolfo Macias, known as Fito reported missing from this massive prison compound on January 7th. If you look over here, this is where officials tell us Fito was being held, possibly is still being held. They really don't know. A top military commander telling me the prison system is rife with mismanagement and heavy gang influence. So much so that Fito could still be hiding inside. Police and military now stepping up their efforts setting up random checkpoints. Every possible hiding place searched. They check tattoos for any gang affiliations and even scroll through people's phones. They also board commuter buses to get intel. He's asking, do they have anything they need to tell him or inform him about? He says, we're doing this operation for you all. Residents here struggle with what's happened to their country over the past few years. They tell me gangs are growing bolder and holding people and their businesses hostage, demanding protection money. This is war, 
At least, that's how the government here sees it. And they're asking the U.S. for support, desperate for tactical equipment, ammo, and intel. Why should the U.S. help? Because people will look at this from the U.S. and they'll say, well, that's Ecuador's problem. I mean, if, if you don't help us, probably you will see more people trying to cross the border I mean, because these people is in the middle of gunfights on their neighborhoods. What would you do? On this date in world history. January 30th, 1933, members of Germany's Nazi party held a parade. Their leader, Adolf Hitler, had just been appointed as the nation's chancellor. He had risen to power quickly, and in the years that followed, Hitler would quickly turn Germany into a dictatorship. This was the date in 1948 when India's prime minister announced, quote, the light has gone out of our lives. Mohandas Gandhi, a Hindu religious leader and activist, had been assassinated earlier that day. Also known as Mahatma Gandhi, the Indian nationalist won international acclaim for his nonviolent resistance to British rule. Pleasant Grove sounds like a pleasant place to go next. It's a city in Utah where we're shouting out Mrs. Reinhold's and Mrs. Harris's classes today. Thank you for watching from Pleasant Grove Junior High in the Beehive State. And moving out west to the last frontier, we come to Mrs. Merculeaf's class. I hope I said that correctly. It's great to see y'all at Wendler Middle School in Anchorage, Alaska. Up for new knowledge. Scurvy, one of the oldest known diseases, is caused by a lack of what? Vitamin A, vitamin C, sunlight, magnesium often associated with sailors on long voyages without fresh foods scurvy is caused by a lack of vitamin c when it comes to the common cold it's a story that's passed through generations vitamin c can prevent or cure symptoms but is it fact or fiction vitamin c is not a silver bullet it's not gonna you know, be magical and get you just over this cold. Dr. Jesse Bracamonte with Mayo Clinic says that while there's no research proving vitamin C can stop you from getting or feeling sick, there are some studies which suggest it may help relieve symptoms sooner, but only by about 10%. Regardless, he says vitamin C is an important part of health. It helps collagen formation. It helps tissues heal. It helps protein and muscle form and stay healthy. It helps your immune system work well. So that's what vitamin C does. It's found in foods like citrus fruits, berries, peppers, tomatoes, and broccoli. The average orange has about 50 milligrams of vitamin C. So an orange, a strawberry, some of that, just a nature, nature's way of getting vitamin C should be enough to sustain you. If you want to get more vitamin C, Bracamonte says supplements may be helpful, but to see a doctor before taking them. Too much of anything is not a good thing. And if you're looking for relief from a cold, you may just need some patience. I just tell people old fashioned thyme, uh, rest, chicken soup can also be the best medicine. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Things you don't expect to see on the U.S. interstate. Camels, zebras, police officers taking selfies with camels and zebras. But a few days ago in Indiana, a tractor trailer was carrying the animals to a nearby circus when it caught fire. So police and a driver leapt into action, reportedly risking their lives to save the four-legged performers. There were no serious injuries, and police even fed the animals hay while they waited for their new ride. Glad they were able to hoof it without acrobatting an eye. They couldn't just grandstand there. There wasn't time for horsing or clowning around. Dumbo couldn't fly them to safety. And without the big top, it wasn't trap easy to parade those participants to an off-road ring. Thankfully, the rescuers ring mastered the challenge and in the process, put on the greatest show, y'all. I'm Carla Zeus for the world from A to Zebra, and we hope you'll join us again on Wednesday.